now over to our final speaker, who is Sam. He's making a return to us. Um, he's been on quite recently. Um, he is strategy manager at Avidly UK and Canada, um, a new title there. Um, and he's just going to be talking through some of the ways that you can segment your contact database in HubSpot. So over to you, Sam. Yeah, thanks, Emily. Um, as Emily mentioned, yeah, we're going to talk about five different effective ways that you can segment your contact database in HubSpot. There are literally probably hundreds of ways that you can do this. But these are five that I use quite regularly in sort of my day to day, and I think it's something you guys will probably find useful as well. Uh, as Emily mentioned, I'm Sam. I'm the strategist manager here at Avidly UK and Canada, which is a fairly new title to me. Um, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn or reach out if you've got any questions on anything within this presentation or anything else. First things first, before we jump into the, the five different ways that I'd recommend, it's obviously a case for database segmentation. And when we talk about database segmentation, what we really talk about is grouping your CRM contacts into different buckets based on shared attributes. It could be any number of things. And obviously we're gonna talk through five today, but before we do that, I'm gonna talk through why we do database segmentation and why it's so useful. Firstly, increased relevance. When we're doing email marketing campaigns, sending the right email to the right person at the right time is of the utmost importance to make sure that they're receiving communications that you know they're gonna to wanna to hear about. Um, you're not sending irrelevant contact, irrelevant information to your contacts and you're basically keeping everyone super subscribed. Second one, enabling effective automation. So you can build hub, uh, workflows in HubSpot off the back of segmented lists. Uh, and obviously have that as part of your automation strategy. You can maintain a clear and organized database that's easy to navigate. Obviously, if you do this once and you keep this updated over and over again, you're gonna have some nice, clean, segmented lists that are gonna be really easy for anyone else who's not as familiar with your CRM, whether it's new employees or someone who's coming in to work on your behalf. They're gonna be able to navigate that database really easily and find lists that they want to they want to be able to use. Improving your email reputation. Obviously, segmentation is one of the key ways that you can improve open rates and click rates, which is going to improve your, your health, uh, your email health and your also your reputation on an email. Um, you're going to get less unsubscribes at the back of it. If everyone's getting relevant email communications, there's going to be less people unsubscribing. Whereas if you send into mass lists of people and some people are going to have to find something relevant, other people are going to find it irrelevant, you're going to notice that your unsubscribe rate goes up. Then you can drive insights into your audience, understand more about your CRM. What is the makeup of your contact database? You know, how many people do you have from certain job roles? How many people do you have from certain industries and things like that? Finally, you can get more robust reporting. Um, you can obviously build custom reports in HubSpot based on segmented lists and sort of help to, do, to build things more tailored to your business rather than the out-of-the-box solutions. And the final thing is just better results in general. And when we say better results, this is a quote from HubSpot that did a, a study on this and found that 39% of marketers who segmented their email list experienced higher open rates, 28% experienced lower unsubscribe rates, and 24% experienced better de deliverability, and perhaps most importantly, greater revenue, which is what we're all aiming for. I'm going to jump into the first of the five that I'm going to recommend now, um, and that's the segment by persona. Um, obviously, if I'm hoping most people in here have done persona work before or the businesses you work for, you've got personas. If you hadn't, this is where I'd highly recommend starting, but that's a, an entirely different talk altogether. So when we talk about segmenting by persona, that's a semi-fictional uh, representation of who you're trying to sell to, help you to build up a picture of, sort of what marketing communications you want to send to different types of customers you have. I've got an example here that I've set up for one of my clients, and one of their personas is an accountant account and it but they also will sell to property managers and other people who work within that industry so they have different uh personas set up one of which is an accountant so we've got here a grouping and this is a, a basic list in hubspot that we've set up the persona is any of accountant andy and there's that's a workflow that's set up in the back that's based on job titles that tags the contact record with that persona so we know that anyone that gets pulled into this list now will be someone we want to talk to from an accounting standpoint and i've also set the life cycle stage to anything other than uh, a customer obviously we we want to talk to prospects and customers in different ways so we can see here i've then got a persona list set up and all the things that I can do and some of the use cases for having this set up here down the right hand side. So making sure your messages are sent to relevant uh, personas. You can basically play off the individual pain points of each persona. Make sure your communication is super relevant. 
speak directly to that persona in your subject line and increase your open rate. If you're sending out mass emails to various different people, it's very hard to stay really personalized in a, in a subject line. When you're doing it by persona, you can, you can speak directly to their pain points or what you know they'll be interested in to sort of increase that open rate. Uh, you can create persona-driven integrated campaigns. So outside of email and everything, you can use this list as like a, a building block. You know, you want to be expanding this out, but you can build out inbound campaigns based on specific personas and obviously look into your CRM and see who you already have to talk to based on that. Of course, sell products and services directly related to that persona. So in the example I've got here, an accountant's interested in a completely different set of functionality from a piece of software, for example, than a property manager will be. I don't want to send them both the same messaging. So I want to make sure I've got a list that when I want to talk about the accounting functionality of this software, or when we, you know, when we release a new piece of functionality that we make sure we get that through to the right audience and we're getting everyone on there and, and also not sort of interrupting people who it's maybe not just as relevant for. Uh, you can, again, you can create custom reports based on your personas so you can understand what kind of penetration you have into the market in each persona, where you maybe need to put a little bit more effort and just making sure you've got everyone in that buyer's decision uh, from different companies. Finally, as I mentioned there, making sure you're not sending irrelevant communications to your other personas. So it's definitely a good one. It's something I'd recommend everyone set up as a starting point. It'd be the first list I create in any, any client account when we start with a new client. The second list I create is a slightly more interesting uh, and a little bit more complicated set up, but segmenting by intent or interest. And this can be really powerful from a, a sales point of view or from a marketing point of view. When we say by intent or interest, that's by using behavioral information that we collect from the website and using that to create lists based on that. So the example that I've got here is from a, a company that we work with that does forklifts. Um, so they've got various, various different types. You're talking things like electric, engine powered, counterbalance. And what they want to do is they want to look at who is interested in which certain types of machinery. So the example we've got here is that they're set up of a prospect. So the, the life cycle stage is anything other than customer. Uh, and then they were basically using page view data based on contacts who have viewed a page on their website that is directly related to a certain product. And we put that on and I put a modifier on that, that it's been done at least two times. The reason being sometimes when you do once, it could just be an accident. But if someone's looked at a page two times or even three times, you know, there's, there's a general level of interest there. They've gone away, they've come back, they've looked at it twice, whether that's a product or a service that you offer. And it's particularly useful if you have uh, multiple products and services to have these lists. So the use cases for that, Obviously, you can talk to your contacts specifically about the, uh, the products and services that you already know they're interested in. You can see that they're looking at these on your website and you can even see how, how recently they've been looking at them. Increase the relevance of your messaging with timely communications based on their actual interests. So it doesn't have to be products or services. It could be another area of the website that they're looking at that they're showing a lot of interest in, whether it's a certain type of blog post or whether it's a certain type of download. You could do it based on form submissions, for example. You can then send promotions and offers for products that you've noticed them looking at. So if someone's consistently returning to a product page, but they're not quite converting, maybe what they're looking for is, you know, a timely email that can jump out and say, you know, we've got an offer, we've got a promotion, we've maybe got a discount just to try and increase some pipeline velocity. Uh, you can send contacts, testimonials and case studies specifically about the products or services that you know they're interested in to try and influence the buyer's decision. And then finally, you could also reach out and offer to talk to them face-to-face uh, -face or obviously virtually around those products and services that they might value in education in. So there's lots of great opportunities for using this type of list. And there's various different ways that you can split that list up as well. So I've done it by page view here, but as I mentioned, it could be by form submission. It could be done by... Um, types of emails that they've been opening, the types of blogs that they're reading. Uh, you can get really creative with this type of segmentation and just figure out what works best for your website or for your product catalog, for example. The third segment is by life cycle stage. And this is something everyone who uses HubSpot will probably be very familiar with in terms of your, your marketing and your sales pipeline. Uh, Segmenting by life cycle stage can be really important because what we don't want to do is talk to all of our contacts at different stages of the life cycle in the same way. So we're trying to increase pipeline velocity. So what we might want to do is make sure we've got a, a list set up for each of the life cycle stages. So the example here, and it's very simple in HubSpot, is just set up a group. The filter is life cycle stages, any of marketing qualified lead or sales qualified lead or lead or subscriber. And basically have those set up so you can see everyone in your database and you can basically see an outline of your pipeline in these lists. 
as I mentioned at the top, the best use case for this is to increase pipeline velocity, where if, it, where if you can see people are getting stuck at sort of the MQL stage, for example, or the SQL stage, you can hit them with more sales-based messaging. Uh, subscribers and leads you might talk about in more education ways. You're trying to nurture them into those MQL, SQL stages. Uh, you can get more familiar with your contacts as they progress through the lifecycle stages and get a good idea of pipeline velocity. You know, where, where do the majority of your contacts sit? If you've got a, a lot of them stuck at lead stage, maybe that's just a sign that you need to nurture a little bit more and start bringing people through to that MQL and SQL stage. You can help sales generate more deals and revenue from contacts in the later stages of the marketing pipeline by hitting them, as I mentioned, with more sales messaging, uh, help, helpful stuff. It could be reviews, anything that you might help to sort of generate more sales conversations and also nurture your contacts that are in the earliest stages of the life cycle. Again, as always with HubSpot, you can build custom reports as well to help you understand your marketing and sales funnel in more detail from, um, right from uh, subscriber through to customer. The fourth segment that we're going to look at is engagement levels. This one is one that I use very, very often. You'll quite often find with a company, and I'm sure you've all the same, that you have a need for general emails. So something that you want to send out to everyone as a blast, whether it's like a company update, for example, or a newsletter. But what you find is that when you send these to your entire contact database, and usually with a lot of businesses, when you've got tens of thousands of contacts, you get really poor engagement rates on these emails. So you get a really bad open rate, you get a really bad click-through rate. And ultimately, that does damage your email health, particularly in HubSpot. And it's really key that you try and keep that up. So what we do for these situations quite often is we create a list by engagement. So an example here of the filtering I've got is for an engaged list. So you can set this up in multiple different ways or you can combine these different ways. So it could be people who have opened multiple emails recently. So if they're opening emails quite regularly, so in, that's in, in this instance, in the last 90 days, they would have opened at least three emails. But also in the last 90 days, they may have viewed more than five web pages. So what we're doing is we're building up a picture of people who are visiting the website quite often. They're opening the emails. They may also be submitting forms, for example, or taking other actions that show that they're engaged. And you can really do this customized to your own needs and requirements, the amount of contacts you've got. What you'll basically get out of doing that is uh, a segment of your audience that are highly engaged. Someone we know will open emails. They're, they're consuming our content. They're looking at our web pages. And you can use that list to send out general emails, keep your email health really high, and just make sure you're not sending anything to um, unengaged sides of the contacts. Similarly, you can also create an unengaged list, and I don't have an example of here, what HubSpot would call gray mail. And you can use that to uh, exclude low engaged contacts. So you can do a reverse version of this based on people who are not opening emails. They've been sent maybe six emails, but they haven't opened one. They've not been on the website in a long time. They've really gone cold. Um, what we all want to do is send them more communications. It's going to impact our email health. So the two sides of the coin here, you can have a high engaged list that you can improve your open and click through rates, making sure you're only sending to the most engaged segments of your audience. And then you can also maintain your email health by excluding those low engaged contacts. Talking of the low engaged contacts, it doesn't mean that you have to never talk to them again, but you might talk to them in a little different way. So you might have like a re-engagement campaign for your low to medium engaged contacts. Make sure that they still want to hear from you. Maybe try and ask them what they want to hear from you, whether they want to be part of your blog subscription list, but maybe they don't want to hear about product updates. It's a good opportunity to try and re-engage those contacts. You can also clear your database of contacts that are really low engaged. And we would recommend that you do this every now and again. So have a look through your gray mail list. If there's someone that you've not interacted with for years, it's not opened emails, then at some point it's worth sort of clearing out that database, getting rid of them. And obviously, you know, in terms of marketing contacts in HubSpot, that's really good because it's keeping that database cleansed, keeping it super engaged. The other thing you can do um, that we quite often will do here is dictate email frequency based on engagement. So the higher engaged contacts, we know we can probably send them more frequent communications and they're probably going to open it. Uh, whereas lower engaged contacts, you might want to send less frequent communications. So a high engaged contact, you might send one email a week. A low engaged contact might be one email a month, just to try and make sure that you're, you're making the most out of the engaged contacts. The final segment that we're going to look at is one that I think also everyone should have. Um, particularly if you have a product or service that spans again across multiple industries, which I know most of our clients do. It maybe serves one purpose, but it maybe has use cases in multiple industries. It's just to set up lists based on your key target industries. And this is work that you can do at the persona stage to figure out 
who your target industries are. You might have a top five target industries, a top 10, but having lists and understanding uh, and obviously collecting the data about what industry these come for can be really, really powerful in terms of personalizing your, your emails and making sure that you're sending relevant communications that feel like they're talking directly to that persona within that industry. So as an example of the use cases there, we can explain how product, your products or services solve the pain points specifically within that industry, whether it's the same product or service that works across multiple industries, you want to talk to them about how it's really going to solve their problems. And obviously that's, a, um, that's an attribute that they all share. And it's something you can quite confidently send out. You can create and distribute case studies specific to industries that demonstrate your expertise and obviously show that you already work within that industry, you know the ins and outs of it. And similarly, useful educational content or timely news that demonstrates that you understand this industry, you're the right partner for the people in that industry, and you know that your products and service can help there. Selling industry-specific products and services. And then one that's often overlooked, I think, and something that could be done more is conducting market research into those target verticals. Um, what works for one persona in one industry might not necessarily work for another in another industry. They're obviously working with, whether it's manufacturing, they're working with different machinery, they may have different pain points still, but you can then start to conduct some market research from your own CRM database. Uh, a little bit how Nana was talking about the uh, survey tool in HubSpot would be a great combination of this. Using that in combination with uh, a, data, a segmented database on industry, you could send out sort of industry specific um, surveys to try and learn more about how you can help within that industry. And as I mentioned on all of these, you can then, of course, build custom reports that will show, you know, penetration into certain industries, how many contacts you have in certain industries that can help to lead your um, sort of marketing strategy going forward. A lot of times we might see clients who don't actually realize that they've had so many contacts come through from a certain industry that they didn't even consider being a target industry. So again, it's all about learning more about your contact database. It's all about having more information. It's all about having the tools at your fingertips to send these timely, relevant marketing campaigns out. That is the fifth and final segment. I've rattled through that a little bit just because I know we were running slightly short on time and I wanted to leave a little bit of time for questions at the end. Uh, if anybody has any, please feel free to drop them in the chat or send them through to Emily or myself after the call if you think about anything. Uh, I'd be more than happy to answer those for you. Thank you very much, Sam. Uh, questions just popped in. What's the best method of setting up reports and analysis on these segments? So when we talk about setting up reports based on these, there's literally a million different ways that you can do it. What I would recommend, and obviously if you've got a specific use case and you want to send that through, we can definitely get the answer for it. It's not a, a catch-all solution as such. There is, if you haven't done it, a great reporting um, certification in the academy. Um, but yeah, in general, for, as an example, if you were setting up the industries, you can set up based on that uh, that segmented database and it can pull it through and you can pull that through into any type of visualization that you might want, whether it's a pie chart based on industries that you work with. Um, obviously, you can base that on the contact record as well, rather than a segmented database. But we're talking about if you're doing something a little bit more custom. Um, but yeah, if you've got a specific use case or something that you've set up and you're trying to get reporting, we can definitely help you answer that. Um, but in general, there's not like a catch-all solution. Sorry, I can't be a little bit more clear there, but like if, you, uh, if you have something more specific, I can definitely get the answer for you. Amazing, Paul. You can just email me um, after this if you want to respond to any of the emails you've had um, and we can get something for you. Um, looks like there's no more questions, but just before, just before we shoot off, obviously I'll let you know when the next Manchester hug is. Um, but if any of you are looking for more opportunities to learn, um, Digital 22, Avidly UK and Canada, is actually hosting an event called Love Inbound on the 23rd of June. It's an in-person event um, and it's free to attend. Uh, we've got loads of different speakers covering loads of different topics. I'm just going to put a link into the chat now for everyone. Um, we actually have Kyle from the HubSpot Academy coming over and he is one of our speakers. Um, and it's basically a great day to engage with other like-minded marketers so if anyone's interested in coming to that get yourself signed up <laughs> kyle is a lot of people's hero <laughs> um but yeah thank you for coming Sorry. to the manchester hug uh, any questions drop them through to me i'll get the slides over to everyone um and yeah see you next time <laughs>